Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Amy TV, where we come together to help you go after the life you want. Is it just me, or has 2020 felt like its own decade so far? Today, I thought it might be useful for you, because I'm hoping it's useful for me, for me to reassess with you my list of 20 for 2020. I shared this in a video with you earlier in January, and uh, we're gonna have to make a few changes here. <laughs> Hit the like button if you're like me and you either did a 20 for 20 list or a goals list for this year that you're kind of afraid to look at. Hopefully you will feel empowered with me through this video to take a chance on reassessing a few things. Here was my list of 20 for 2020 and how we're doing so far. And then uh, what we're gonna have to do to adjust. Stay tuned until the very end of my list because there might be something new on my 20 for 2020 that is coming for you and you're gonna love it. Number one, 30 minute workout every day. We started off so strong on this, we really did. February and March kind of fell apart. This I get this thing called a microblade done and they're like, oh sorry, you can't work out for two weeks after you get a microblade. And I'm like, ugh, twist my arm. But when March came around and I still wasn't doing as much as I wanted to, I decided to take the Matt Diavella approach to this and try the two day rule, which is where you don't go more than two days without hitting the gym or doing your workout of choice. I definitely got my groove back on this in April when I got really hip to the Peloton in quarantine and I ended up doing their April challenge of working out every day for 30 days so I could get that badge. You know, it, I needed a little gold star. I needed the reward. So that helped a ton. And I'm still going strong with the two day rule. I've actually worked out four days in a row. Today will be five, so I'm excited. Number two, get custom seasonal wreaths made. I did this, kinda. My first full season in the house was spring, and I got this beautiful wreath made from a lovely woman on Etsy, and I love it too much to replace it, so I haven't even bothered to shop for one for summer. So I actually think that that's okay. I don't need to have unnecessary expenses for the house, uh, especially since we just moved in in the last year and it's very much susceptible to many expenses otherwise throughout the house. So I think it's okay that, you know, I'll probably get a new one for the holidays. That's when I think I'll get re-energized around it again, maybe the fall. But I think it's something that we can accumulate over a number of years and ultimately over two or three years, I'll end up having those four seasonal wreaths that fill my cup. I'll also link to the one that I got just in case you wanna get one too. Number three, I said I would stop eating meat. I don't know why. <laughs> Here's what I've decided. I'm a girl from the Midwest. I like meat and potatoes. The thing that bothers me is making meat. And since I have assigned my husband to be in charge of making meat on the grill from now on, I'm only in charge of like carbs and veggies. So dinner comes together pretty well. This is just not gonna be me, unfortunately. That we're just not at that phase in my life where I'm cutting out meat. Not sure what I was thinking on that. Number four, read 50 books. I'm still doing pretty good on this. I'm a bit behind. Goodreads says that based on my goal of 50 books in a year, I am eight books behind, but I've read 16. I feel pretty good about that. And I'm in the middle of two right now. And The Daily Stoic is a book I read all year long. So that one won't get you know, box checked until the very last day of the year. I feel good about where I'm at with this progress. I'll also be catching up quite a bit in the summer. Number five, regular coffee dates with Vin. This one was kind of fun because behind the scenes, it involved a little bit more than I could talk to you about. Get your head out of the gutter. At the time of filming, we had bought a house, but we hadn't moved into it yet. So the coffee dates were also like ulterior motive to go to the place that's down the street from our new home so that we could go have coffee on Sunday mornings and then pop into our house to see how the painting and a couple of renovation things were going. And then we moved in and we kept going to that same coffee place for lovely Sunday dates. And then COVID happened and those Sunday dates came to a screeching halt. However, we have renewed our love for them on our deck where we have this fabulous deck furniture that I found just in time for summer. And so we've been enjoying quarantine coffee dates. It's been nice. Number six, start donating on behalf of Gatlu House to nonprofit organizations. This went pretty well. We launched the Gatlu Society and all of the people that joined helped contribute to the campaign that we were doing for Pencils of Promise. So excited we started raising and we've already reached more than a thousand dollars for that. That was also supposed to be my birthday campaign. We were gonna continue to kind of like rah-rah around POP for my birthday, but then a lot of other things were happening in the world and it just felt like 
like maybe we could share the love in other ways. So that is when we pivoted and I did a video here called I Stand With You in which I started the effort of fundraising for the NAACP. We are still fundraising for them, so definitely check the link for that out if you would like to contribute or if you would like to contribute to Pencils of Promise, that's linked as well. But the most important thing is that we all come together both from our profit sharing here at the media company so that our work continues to go bigger and greater than just sharing these videos with you, but also to encourage you to use your voice and your dollar dollar whenever possible by um, sharing. We did that. I'm very pleased. We had another thousand dollars for the NAACP so far. I think that this is just the beginning of what we can do as a community to contribute to the greater causes of the world. Number seven, more Instagram chats is what I said. I'm, I'm getting better at this. I don't know why it's so natural for me to sit down in front of this situation and just yammer on. I mean, it gets excessive. Instagram, I just feel like I want to post pretty things all the time and I don't always talk, but I've gotten a lot better about this. I try to communicate and just speak directly to the camera as much as I can. Um, it helps when I have an active community over there, and I do. Everyone that follows on Instagram, if you don't, make sure you check it out. There's so much love there. People constantly providing feedback on things I post or videos that I've shared or potential videos for the future. And so I just love it. And I'm just continuing to flex my talking muscle over there, I guess. I don't know. Number eight, host quarterly dinner parties. Haha. <laughs> so that's not socially acceptable anymore. <laughs> I had a bunch of people over right before quarantine. It was for Lucy's birthday. And then everybody got locked down. And so this concept of like actually inviting like a small intimate group over to our big dining room table didn't really work out. But that's okay. I've kind of talked 2020 up to a loss on that. But I will say we had Vin's family visit. My family visited also while they were visiting and we were socially distancing and all that fun stuff. But sitting at my big dining room table and actually having people for the first time this month was so nice. Um, and I do look forward to uh, the developments on this front where we feel like we can do that more comfortably in each other's homes. So looking forward to dinner parties again at another time. Number nine, go back to Vegas for my anniversary with Vincenzo. I am 99.99999% sure this is not going to happen. We have not really wrapped our mind around getting back on a plane for so long, and it's really amazing. We typically fly twice a month, both of us, sometimes to different places, sometimes together. So the fact that we're like, eh, you know, not really in the mood to fly, even if things are kind of looking on the up and up, um, that's one thing. But the other thing is that we've actually kind of thought about taking a different trip in August, and so we'll uh, be probably doing that instead, something drivable, not flying, and just kind of keep it short and safe instead. So that one's gotta go. Number 10, host a family holiday. Again, <laughs> a little bit of trouble here. I'm gonna play it by ear. I'm hoping to at least do something sort of around the actual holiday season later in the year. That was my original motive anyway, but we're just gonna have to see how health and wellness goes at that point. Number 11, learn some Italian. Learn level one Italian was what I wrote down in my bullet journal. <clears throat> Nope, I haven't done that, but I have been using the Babbel app a lot. I just end up in this situation where I argue with myself, like, do you want to practice Italian or do you want to read? Because you're behind on reading, but also you could practice some Italian. So um, I have to kind of balance the two. I need to get better about like just like making time for both. Clearly, I'm not prioritizing the Italian. That is the bottom line here. But with all these other things that I have to change off the list, there should be a little bit more time, shouldn't there? Number 12, sell more clothes on Poshmark. I wanted to do this on a monthly basis. I'm not doing it monthly, but I will say I've had great success with this. I typically do like big batches at one time, and I think that's actually been helping a little bit to get more attention on my Poshmark store, so pro tip, I'm not sure. I definitely have been selling some things in my Poshmark store. I need to have even more things. I've created an entire area of my closet that when I know I'm totally done with something, I take it out of the place where I pick out clothes to wear and I put it in the place to sell so that I can immediately take it out of the equation, makes it easier to pick out what to wear, but then also put it in the space where I know if I have time to start listing things on Poshmark, it's ready to go. It's sitting there in the section where I need to start doing that. If you like, check out my Poshmark store. There might be something there for you. Number 13, pay for work travel less. <laughs> Winning. It's like I put it out into the universe and they gave me what I wanted and they also gave the world something awful. So I don't know what to think of that one yet. Number 14, start a podcast with Vincenzo. 
we did this. <laughs> we actually started one. We have artwork. We, we have a name. We have episodes. Um, but everything changed so much with COVID that his business really picked up a lot. And we've been pivoting over here. So it hasn't been a whole lot of time to sit down and record some. But I know that we are thinking about it often. And we just need to kind of come up with a couple more topics to sit down. But we actually sat back here with our headphones on, had a little chat. And at least I think we've done like two and a half episodes. I say a half because episode zero is really short. If you are interested in a couple doing business together in love and in business, is that something you would want to subscribe to in your podcast earbuds? Let me know in the comments. Number 15, stop saying the F word. Well, I've decided this one's also a little far-fetched for me. So I just don't think it's realistic to have a spot on the 20 for 2020. So lofty though. Number 16, take more selfies. Um, um, I think I am, but not really. When I put this one on the list, I was thinking I need to take more selfies with my friends. I need to take more selfies with my husband. I need to take more selfies with my dog, like my mom. Like, it just doesn't happen very often when you're not seeing people very often. And when I am seeing people, I'm focused on seeing people because I never get to see people anymore. So the selfie thing hasn't exactly picked up, but I will say I've taken a lot of terrible selfies of myself that are in my phone just to flex the habit. Number 17, sustain a healthy work environment and culture. This took an interesting turn too. I think we've done this for the most part in the office. I mean, I painted the walls pink. What else do you want? <laughs> With COVID, you know, we couldn't have anyone working in the office for a period of time. And actually only recently did I open the office back up as an option because I wanted the team who doesn't have the best work from home conditions to be able to at least change it up a little bit. And we have a COVID-19 policy and a sanitization policy that everyone needs to abide by in order to be able to use the office. So I think that that's helpful, but for a while it was more along the lines of navigating how do we keep this culture and communication when everyone's working remotely. And the entire team really stepped up when they realized that how they show up in digital formats, like in a project manager, like Trello or on Slack for conversations, um, it was even more important so that we could kind of check in on where everyone's at or where they're feel what they're feeling or what they need help with. So I actually think this has been going really well and I have touch bases with my team um, we try to do twice a month uh, just to let them tell me like what's on their mind. It's not like a me telling you how you're doing. It's more like you tell me like, how are we doing? And those seem to have been going really well. So I think we're doing okay on this. Number 18, throw Lucy a birthday party. I did that. Lucy turned 16 this year. We were able to have a birthday party for her right before the lockdown, which was the event I told you about earlier. And so that felt really lucky and spoiling. <laughs> A lot of people didn't get to celebrate their birthday, but my dog got to celebrate her 16th. So there's that. Number 19 was a secret because I couldn't tell you what it was. At the time, I had written down for number 19 to finish the dressing room in my new home. This was like, for me, the number one thing I needed to do. Actually, that's not true. It was the number two thing. It was the number three thing. In order to feel comfortable moving into the new home, there were a couple of things I had to do. The first thing was to replace the fireplace because it was awful. The second thing was to paint the whole house just to have a fresh coat of paint and to get the colors to where I needed them to be. And the third thing was number 19 on this list and that was to complete my dressing room. That was important to me because I knew the entire house was gonna take time. It was gonna take a moment for us to feel like it was ours. And as the morning routine queen, I needed to have a space that felt like me. And one of the things that the previous office did for me was it was also a dressing room for me. There was a walk-in closet and so it played both roles for me. I felt like turning the second bedroom of this house, which is a very, very, very small room, by the way, into a dressing room would make me feel more at home more quickly so that I could feel empowered every morning when I was doing my morning routine to be able to attack the rest of the things that it would take to feel like the house was ours. And so, I did that, number 19. And number 20, reach 1 million subscribers on YouTube. I guess there's still time. Feel free to help. Okay, so let's do a little reassessment. Number three, since we are 100% sure Amy's not giving up meat, I'm gonna change this one up a little bit. So we're gonna change number three to complete the new home interior design, at least the phase one of that. And what that looks like is I want the first floor to be done. First floor is looking pretty good. We just got a new couch. Uh, we uh, finalized a lot of stuff in the dining room. Everything feels really good. Artwork will kind of come. There's, I, 
I think it's like not that much left. The biggest thing we have to do is paint the kitchen cabinets. So I feel really good that this one's going to get done and just to have like a completed first floor, that would be huge for 2020. I don't care if we don't like really finish the second floor to where we want it to be until next year. I think it would be a huge win to feel like the first floor we could welcome people in in 2021 when everyone's happy and healthy. I mean, <laughs> happy hopefully also. That's what I want number three to be. I just want to finish what I've started on the first floor. Number eight, not going to be hosting quarterly dinners any longer this year. So what I'm going to start is a happiness journal. You know how I love to start a whole new project. We should do a video on all the different ways that I can fill a notebook because I have like so many notebooks that serve different purposes. <laughs> One of those is a happiness journal. So what I've always tried to do is like when I catch myself like ear to ear smiling genuinely like happy about something, making a note of what triggered that so that I can have a list of those things. So I want to start a happiness journal where I can write down when those moments happen so I can refer to it in the future when I'm like really feeling really down. One example is just the smell of coconut. The smell of coconut is straight heaven for me. And so I would put that on my happiness journal. Number nine was anniversary in Vegas. We're going to change this to schedule and stick to one social media free weekend per month. I took a social media break in April. I think it was like a week and it was delightful. I have to say. Social media is a big part of my career, so there's even more balance that has to be in place for me. So I think instead of needing like a lot of time at once, like a week, because I feel overwhelmed, I think instituting one weekend a month would be much easier. Number 13 was to pay for work travel less. I won that one. I think we should just give me a check mark, gold star for that. But COVID was pretty much the reason for it. So um, I don't know if that's realistic. Instead, I think we should replace it with my love of the Masterclass app. So if you don't know what Masterclass is, it is some of the most amazing film of amazing teachers teaching things that they do amazingly. And so it's so much fun to watch. What I would like to do is assign myself to finish five masterclasses this year. And it's actually not that hard to do because a lot of these videos are fairly short. Um, one of them that I really liked was Malcolm Gladwell talking about writing. That's a great masterclass, but I took that last year, so that would be cheating. But I would like to do five more of these because there's so many. I literally want to watch every single one on the app. Number 15, stop saying the F word, F that. We're going to change this to a very fun and exciting announcement. Number 15 on my 20 for 2020 will now be to relaunch the Good Morning Good Life planner. If you're familiar with Good Morning Good Life, it is my book that I uh, put out into the world last December. The Good Morning Good Life Planner is the planner that goes with it to help you to start every day on your terms and to go after the life that you want. Taking the advice from the book and applying it to real life. It's a planner I'm very proud of. I see people post on Instagram about it all the time, but I feel like we needed to level it up like 80 notches because that's just how I am. So I'm not showing it to you yet, but just know that very soon I will be sharing more details about the Good Morning Good Life Planner, the new iteration of the planner, what it looks like, how to use it in a future video. And if you would like to be one of the first people to know when it is available, check out the link in the description below and sign up for email updates. I will be sure to let you know. Stay tuned for more on that. I'd like your help with my new and improved 20 for 2020 list. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel. That would help me a ton. On. And if you would like to look at all of the things that were on my list and are now on my list, check out the blog post on gatlu.com. I will link to that below. Question of the day, what is something on your 20 for 2020 list or your 2020 goals list that needs a little bit of a reassess and where do you think you would like to go with it instead? Share that in the comments below so we can talk about it. That's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it as always. Make sure you subscribe for good vibes, kiss the ones you love, and go after the life you want. Cheers.